Positive Filter with your host, Philip Wilkerson, a podcast that focuses on friends, family, health, and career with a little self-help around the way. Please join me in this journey for self-improvement, and I hope that what I have to share will make you a better person, thus making the world a better place. Hello, boys and girls, uh, uh, listeners of Positive Filter. It's Philip Wilkerson back with another episode of Positive Filter. I'm joined by a very special guest. Actually, I've been a guest on his show, and, and the way I work is if I'm on your show, you got to come on mine. That's, that's the rule I have for, for my friends in the podcast world. But I'm joined by a very special guest, Mike Dorsey. But I'm going to let Mike Dorsey introduce himself to listeners. Oh, what's going on, man? Phil, I appreciate you for having me on, brother. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, my name is Mike Dorsey, aka Mike D. Um, I'm the creator of Black Fathers Now, the podcast, and author of Dynamic Black Fatherhood Manifesto and Abe, Always Be Engaged, The Seven Keys to Living a Fit Urban Life. Most importantly, I am a husband and a father to two little rambunctious kids that keep my wife and I super, super busy. Um, content creator, speaker, um, communications consultant, you know, I mean, the list can go on, but at the end of the day, I'm here to chop it up with my man on positive filter and drop some positive vibes. Yeah. Yeah. Folks that are listening. And, you know, you know, I forgot to say my AKA, you know, AKA Prince of Positivity, AKA Positive Filter, AKA I got Austin, Texas on my leg, AKA I'm the most random friend you have, AKA I am everyone's favorite alpha, even yours, oh. AKA, hey, hey, so, <laughs> AKA, 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 uh, I love everybody. But, you know, what's some, <laughs> what's, some, what's, some, what's some of your aliases? Man, I mean, honestly, you know, Mike Dorsey is my government name, or Michael, <laughs> Michael Dorsey, but Mike D., most of my friends call me Mike D. Um, but then, you know, growing up, man, uh, well, actually not even growing up, in college, Turtle became my nickname. And it was funny, a um, little story behind that. I had a buddy when we came to uh, college, we went to Georgia Tech. And one of the things he saw, he saw me and I was bald head and, you know, I was in pretty good shape and everything. He looked at me and I think we might have been consuming a few beverages at the time. And he said, dude, you look like a Ninja Turtle. And everybody started laughing, right? And it was funny because the name stuck and I became introduced as Turtle. And it was funny, AOL Instant Messenger, that was yeah. back in the day. Yeah, My yeah. actual screen name was MLD Turtle. I and so, uh, yeah, man. So it was, that was it. And I mean, you know, my line name was DeBrain. You oh, know, yes. Omega Sci-Fi Fraternity Incorporated is in the building. Of course. Um, <laughs> you know, I mean, so I, I got a few nicknames, but I, I'll, I'll stop there. I like Turtle. <laughs> so, so, you know, obviously we're going to, you know, uh, the one reason I wanted to have you on the podcast is because um, I want to sh- learn about your journey about promoting black fatherhood. Mm-hmm. Uh, as I told you earlier, you were one of the first uh, black father podcasts I started listening to. Uh, mm-hmm. We came in contact r- randomly in the group me's. We were in the same group me and you dropped a few episodes. And I, I was just like, I love when people are consistent. You were doing it every week. You're like, yo, check out my episodes. And I just started listening and it became one of my you know, regularly scheduled listening uh, podcasts. Especially for me as a black father, I found it, it was a, just a good voice to hear some mm-hmm. other. So, mm-hmm. But what, what transpired, to, what, what made, led you to create this podcast, your podcast? Okay, well, Black Fathers Now actually started in the summer of 2017. But prior to that, I actually had another podcast called The Fit Urban Life Show. And I launched that in the summer of 2015. And that was actually in conjunction with the writing of my first book. Um, It's called Abe, Always Be Engaged, The Seven Keys to Living a Fit Urban Life. So I wanted to have something in conjunction with the book to kind of put out there. And so I actually, I did 125 episodes of the Fit Urban Life Show, Mm -hmm. interviewed all kinds of people. But after a while, it started to get kind of stale for me, right? Mm -hmm. Because um, it was good content, good conversations, but it really wasn't a lot of direction. And I was going through this whole, you know, who am I Mm -hmm. thought process. And, you know, I actually paid for a consulting session with a guy the end of 2016. And Mm -hmm. one of the things we talked about was kind of your purpose. Like, what are you designed here to do? And yada, yada, yada. 
And when we started talking and unpacking things, one of the things that literally came to the forefront, no matter what, was fatherhood. Like mm-hmm. everything kind of stemmed back to fatherhood. And he was just like, dude, I don't know what you're doing now, but you need to find something to do in the space or in the realm of fatherhood. Mm -hmm. And when I started to do the deep dive on myself, I came to realize that one of the core motivations inside of me was to be a good father. Mm -hmm. And um, that stems from, you know, my upbringing, but then also the concept of me wanting to help to inspire, you know, other brothers who are along on this journey. And the added benefit to it is the fact that I am an African-American man. I'm a black man. And mm-hmm. by telling these stories, it helps to do my part to help reshape the narrative from a very authentic perspective, because we are not one monolithic, mm-hmm. you know, group of people that always do the same thing, listen to the same music and yada, yes. yada, yada. There's, there's a lot of different variances within, you know, this whole African-American male space. And a lot of times those authentic voices don't get don't get heard. And so um, I would thought. I, you know, am gifted with the ability to effectively communicate. I have some significant relationships. Why not marry the two together and really create a podcast that's speaking directly to the African-American male fatherhood experience, but it has the capacity or the ability to inspire those that listen to it who might not necessarily fit that demographic. But I'm speaking to the brothers and I'm doing my part to help reshape the narrative. So lo- that's kind of the backstory. I love that. And I, I, I love the title Black Fathers Now. And when I hear the word now, it has a sense of urgency. Yes. Was there, was there a reason why you said not just Black Fathers podcast, but Black Fathers Now? What, where the, what, what was the significance of the word now in that title? Okay. I'm going to tell you, okay, there, there is a couple of different points there, but um, first and foremost, necessity breeds innovation, right? And at the point of me starting Black Fathers now, I couldn't just use the term Black Fathers because the term, you know, was already taken. I couldn't, yeah. you know, yeah. and I, I mean, for me, I used to always go to like, what's, what URL is available, right? Mm-hmm. So yeah. blackfathers.com was already taken or blackfatherhood.com was already taken. So I couldn't yes. do that. So I had to think of something else, but then it, it brought me back to a conversation. I had an episode on the Fit Urban Life show when I talked about the power of now. And when I posted that, I had a guy in one of the threads, and I actually did an episode on now, on the, on the Black Fathers Now as well. But I, when I posted that episode, I had a guy come in the comment thread. And one of the things that he mentioned was, he said, have you ever spelled now backwards? And I was like, hmm. And I looked at it, and spelling now backwards is the word one. And so if you focus on now, eventually you can spell it backwards. And to your point, now is a call to action. So Mm -hmm. the whole premise behind Black Fathers Now is not just theory. It's not just telling stories. It's about telling stories, dropping information, insight, and wisdom that the brothers listening can take action on in some way, shape, or form right now. And so that's, it's a call to action to an extent because, you know, theory is cool. Information is cool. Wisdom is cool. Data is cool. But if you don't use it, what's the point? You know, you're going to be on Jeopardy or something. You know what I'm saying? Like, Hey, I, hey why not? <laughs> why? Look, yeah. hey, they making some bread now. They got yeah. the tournament of champions yeah. going yeah, exactly. on. Exactly. So. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But I think you're right. Like, especially as a, a counselor, man, I used to like, man, people used to ask, you know, talk about the theories and counseling. I'm like, I'm not, mm-hmm. I'm bored. This show boring. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. I love, the reason why I love my counseling program is because we actually put it into work. You know what I'm saying? Like, yes. We had the actual practice or we had to do an internship. So I love, I love things that have a, a practical application piece. And that's what I love about your podcast too, is that it doesn't just say blah, 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 dads, dad, dad. So yo, what are you doing right now to do the mm-hmm. thing? And, we, and I feel like I get charged up to actually do some actions. And that's, and that's the whole point, man. I think um, we have to get away from a lot of theory and concepts and whatever, yeah. because a lot of that is designed to sound smart, right? Yeah. But my whole thing is how do you then take action on that? And if it sounds so smart, then it's not you know, not in a place in which the overwhelming majority can gain anything from it because they can't apply it, you know? So it is what it is. That's, that's kind of my whole theory in regards to anything. It's like, what can I do with it? Can I use it? If I can't use it, then kind of what's the point? Now, when you did the transition, you know, go back in your time machine, when you did the transition from your old podcast to new podcast, uh, you know, like all things in life, transitions are difficult or strange. Was it weird? Did, did it go smoothly like you thought it would? What was some of the, you know, when you stopped one podcast and started another? Because I know a lot of people out there uh, probably transition shows. Mm-hmm. How, how, was it, how was that transition for you? Um, I'm going to tell you, the, my first thought was, and this is it's interesting when I was speaking to the guy, and, and this is, 
you know, there, there's a, a biblical verse in Proverbs that says, you know, there's a, uh, there's value in a multitude of counsel. You know what I'm saying? A wise man seeks a multitude of counsel. And so to me, this is a, a prime example of that by me paying a little bit of money and having a session with a guy to help me unpack, you know, my thoughts there. My initial thoughts were to just change the name of my show and continue. Right. Mm -hmm. Because again, I did 125 episodes of the Fit Urban Life show. You put it was a lot doing of time. A, yeah, yeah, put a lot of time in, a lot of effort, a lot of thought. This was my first time doing a podcast. So I was like, yo, I'm kind of moving. And the dude said, man, no, snip the cord, start, shut it down and start something new. And I was like, wow, just let all that other stuff go. And he was just like, no, just start something new. Now, granted, I still have the data from that old show so I can repurpose that and mm -hmm. excuse me, use it to create content or whatever. Because when you create and utilize kind of evergreen topics, those aren't things that are like current events, so to speak. You mm -hmm. can, I mean, they're timeless. So therefore they're applicable now and they'll be applicable a decade or two decades from now, right? right? right. So it's not an issue of me losing that, but it's the whole notion of being okay with starting fresh. And I think to your point, transitions, pivots, changes, mm -hmm. um, you know, a pivot is interesting. Somebody used the analogy with a pivot. They said a pivot is not a complete break from what mm. you're doing it's no. just a change in direction think about yeah. basketball when you pivot one foot stays there you're just changing direction yeah. right and and i never thought about it that way and so for me it was less of a completely you know jumping ship from what i was doing it was more of a just change direction and a little more narrow in my focus and really being focused on you know my audience and who i'm speaking to in regards to the subject matter well i so, tell people yeah. about you know, career services when you change direction like it's always what's next. And as you continuously progress in life, you're just still going forward, like you just said. Mm -hmm. But the, if you think about pivoting, like going from one place to the next place, the, the overall trajectory is still forward, progress. Yes, absolutely. So, so it might be different directions, but you're still, wait, if you go back in a thing, you're still, you're in a further place than where you started. So even yes. if you make directions, you're still going forward, right? No one, mm -hmm. no backward steps. Um, so with that being said, what was some of your, you know, this is a great topic. Did you think that the, the, the subject, since you said I saw the domains were already used, a lot of black fathers things, mm -hmm. did you ever go like, man, uh, and, and this is something I talk to other people that are starting mm -hmm. podcasts, but you're like, dang, is this, is this topic oversaturated? Uh, you know, am I redoing something? Or you were like, yo, and I know you're very confident. You're mm -hmm. like, you know what? It don't matter if it's got black fathers. This is Mike Dorsey's black fathers podcast. Mm -hmm. Can you explain to listeners, were you already motivated? Like, this is my topic or you had to kind of break through that? uh that initial sense of like being redundant with uh, which is not but i'm just saying like with a topic that's probably got a lot of different pockets in you, you know it, it's um it, it's kind of an interesting thing i mean you think about like saturated markets and you think yeah. like okay there's a million people doing this already and mm -hmm. you know i'm gonna be a million and one i mean same thing like with writing a book you know i think i was reading somewhere there, there were roughly like a million titles self-published last year mm -hmm. alone Right. Mm. And so, but yet day in and day out, everybody, you know, there's another person that wants to write a book or tell their story. Mm -hmm. The other part that I would say is, I mean, as it pertains to the world, there are roughly 7.7 .7 billion people in the world. Mm -hmm. Right. And um, so there's an audience for whatever you're doing somewhere. Now, mm -hmm. it might not be in your neighborhood. It might not be in your city, your state. It might not even be in your country. But there is an audience for what you're doing because, um because it's 7.7 .7 billion people in the world. Now let's take that down to the concept of black fatherhood, right? Mm -hmm. I was thinking about it from the standpoint of numbers, 350 million roughly people in the United States, black people roughly 13%. So you're talking what 40 some odd, potentially 50, say even number, roughly 50 million black people yes. in America alone, right? Yeah, 50 million. And you okay. start look, yeah, you look the breakdown, you know, if about 40% of those are fathers, you start mm -hmm. looking at it, okay, we got maybe 20 million, no, not fathers, 20 million males. And mm -hmm. of that, we probably have about four or five or so million black fathers, right? Yeah. So my whole thing is, if you look at the numbers, no matter how many, you know, outlets are out there, are all of these four million black fathers being touched by something? And I would say, no, I don't care yeah, if there's yeah, yeah. oversaturation. I don't, think, I don't think everyone's being touched. That's one. But then the other part to it was, I looked at my specific niche and my specific niche when I looked at the space of black fatherhood, the overwhelming majority of the, the content that was created was lifting the bottom up, 
It's about absentee fatherhood. It's about, you know, mm. taking care of your kids and learning how to change diapers and get back in your kid's life and yada, yada, yada. That was the overwhelming narrative in the space of black fatherhood, mm -hmm. in, especially like um, in, in the communication side of it. Yes. My whole thing was when I looked around, the overwhelming majority of my contemporaries were good dads. They were yes. married, yeah, they were in the yeah. life of the, yeah, yeah, you know what I'm saying? And so my whole thing is when I looked at my contemporaries, I didn't see the absentee dad. Mm -hmm. Right. I saw the good dad who looked in the mirror every day and said, you know what? Yeah, I'm good, but I could be better. Right. Yes, so yes. my whole thought process or the content that I bring to the table, you know, even like yourself, you know, having these conversations, like when I had you on the show, you know, it's about talking to, you know, black mm -hmm. dads who are yeah. considered air quote average, but want to be better going from yeah. good to great. And so in that particular niche or in that particular space, I didn't really feel like I saw a whole lot of um, content being created. And so that's the void that I look to fill. It's did you, the did you black listen, dad going from good to great. Did mm -hmm. you listen to other podcasts about dads before you to get the, the, the get the, to find your own voice or narrative? Like, you know, like, you know, like I'm gonna write a self-help book. Let me read a few mm -hmm. and see which one, what aspect I can add that's different. Did you listen to some podcasts before? I mean, I listened to a lot of podcasts, but I did not. I mean, to be completely transparent, I didn't listen to a lot of dad podcasts. You mm. know what I'm saying? So it was not like yeah. I was going yeah. around and trying to find every dad podcast out yeah. there. And so to that point, I, you know, scanned through social media. I was looking through mm -hmm. different, you know, books and yep. accounts and all of that. And even to this day, the whole concept of even just fatherhood in general, not just black fatherhood specifically, there's a lot more voices out there, but yes. it's still not reach critical mass. Right. In the sense yeah. of there's not yeah. it's not critical, critical mass there. And it's still on the front end of really kind of helping to reshape the narrative of fatherhood. So, no, I didn't listen to a lot of podcasts. And, you know, fortunately, because of the previous show, i had already found my voice. Yeah. It was just yeah. then about, you know, putting content out there and kind of getting feedback on what folks thought about it and, yeah. you know, where I could improve and, you know, what they would like to hear and see, you know, that would be valuable to them because it, we're trying to incite action. You know, that's why it's Black Fathers now. I love it. And then what about the, you said that, you know, so now that you rebranded yourself and you, mm -hmm. you rebranded yourself, you pivoted, you got this new podcast, which I, I'm going to say again, it's amazing. It's one of my, my favorites to listen to. What was some of the, how'd you gather feedback to, to know if this is the lane, if this is a, to keep with it? What was some of those, uh, what was some of that feedback and who were some of your, your counsel? Yeah. So, I mean, honest, honestly, man, just I utilize social media a lot. Right. But then also, I again, those folks that I come into contact with, you know, I'm a African-American man and I'm connected to a lot of African-American yeah, males. Yeah. So I ask questions. And what's interesting, a lot of the, the dialogue, um, a lot of the dialogues or the conversations spawn from conversations that I've had with other brothers. Right. Mm -hmm. And so therefore, yeah. because these are conversations that we're having, Yes, we're unique, but yet we're not different from other folks. We might have cha similar challenges, but yeah. at the end of the day, we all similar. We have similar struggles, so to speak, right? And yeah. so the conversations that we have on a regular basis, I utilize those kind of as a subject matter um, guide, mm -hmm. so yeah. to speak, to bring conversations to the to the show itself. And so, so yeah, so as far as counsel, my current network, my current network of friends, as well as, you know, just use, using social media and jumping in various, you know, Facebook groups and, you know, on various chat lines and, and you know, I, mace. that's how we found mace. each other. That's yeah. how we found each other, man. So just yeah. opening it up, man, using tech, the technology that's available. I love it. And then, um, so one of the things you thought about, like, you, you got this, this podcast is rolling. How do you come up with a uh, new subject? I mean, obviously your, your life experience. I could just say, mm -hmm. uh, this happened to me today. How, mm -hmm. do you, how do you come up with uh, the, just the content for about being a father? Cause I, you know, it's, as I said, when I listen to your show, it's not like, Oh, here's the same over. It's, it's mm -hmm. different. Every mm -hmm. episode is a different topic, a different Bible verse. How do you come mm -hmm. up with that stuff? How do you, you know? Yeah. yeah so for me, man, it's uh, for one, to your point, when you are the target audience you know again my life or the things that i'm struggling with is it can simply be like man are y'all dealing with this too right yes, or yeah, this challenge yeah. that i had with my wife yesterday or this challenge i had with you know my little girl or my little boy last week is that something that you all struggle with and how did you all handle it just kind of opening mm -hmm. up from that perspective just from a place of authenticity that's one but then the other part and this is kind of the you know the one of the ulterior motives of black fathers now is to share the diversity of the black male experience, right? Yes, so yes. What, gravi what I gravitate to is I gravitate to excellence, but then I also gravitate to nonlinear paths to success, right? 
excellence okay. and nonlinear paths to success. So when I connect with or meet a brother who is doing something neat and then I start talking a little bit to him and his backstory is like not this typical yeah. straight line thing. I'm like, that's an interesting story, right? That could inspire another brother who feels like they're far off in left field to move forward in life and to not be fearful of doing so, right? Yeah. Or the, the other side is when I connect with brothers who are operating with a level of excellence in some realm of society and politics, business, whatever it is, right? And just kind of sharing their story because the part of it that I really want to get out there is really showing the diversity of the African-American male experience. Yeah. And those stories then connect to how you can then become a better version of yourself and the byproduct of you being a better man, being a better person, is you also become a better father, right? Oh, and sure. yeah. a, a lot of the brothers that I interview, almost everybody, most are fathers, but there are a few brothers who aren't fathers, but they have had stories that the black males who are fathers can listen to that can you know, basically take something from and apply to their life at that particular moment. But yeah. again, it's, resha it's reshaping the narrative of the black male experience. Now, one of the things I think about, uh, I always look at the positive, we're going to end on a positive note, but okay. have, have, you ever, have you ever gotten an uh, interview or something like that and got some negative feedback about an oh, episode? Oh, a lot. And, and, and what? Like, what would be the negative feedback? Like, uh, you know, you only, <laughs> talk about, you only talk about black dads. What about the oh, white dads? dude, I don't know, man. I don't know. Like, that's, that, you, you hit the nail on the head, man. It's, it's so interesting. Um, within black spaces, the only time that, there's, I mean, not only time, but the time in which there's some pushback is when there's maybe, you know, a topic that somebody doesn't agree with. And they'll say like, man, I think about this a little bit differently. And I'm cool with that. I'm like, well, cool. Yeah, that's Share. dialogue. That's, that's, dialogue. that's awesome. That's dialogue yeah. back and yeah. forth. Right. But when there's actual pushback or negativity is when I do present black fathers now in non-black spaces. Yeah. Right. Okay. So, so when I jump into, you know, like dad's groups or dad Facebook groups or mm -hmm. dad chats or whatever, in which maybe is only a couple black guys in there and the title black fathers now pops up or I share an episode, you know, and I ask for thoughts. Typically the first few thoughts are, you know, why are you being so divisive? Why is it black fathers now? Why are you throwing race in there? And one of the things that I come to realize <laughs> is that it's, it's interesting, it's funny, yeah. but the thing is race in this day and age in, in the time that we live, race is such a trigger word here in America that um, it doesn't even matter what you're saying. If there is an implication or some type of association with race mm -hmm. there, then you, it elicits a response from a lot, right? Yeah. And uh, for some, it's the response of, you know, I don't like you throwing race because, you know, I feel like everybody's pointing their finger at me. I'm not a racist, you know, mm -hmm. or the other side of it is I feel the need to defend myself. You know what I'm saying? So it's funny. I have some that will criticize me in these groups, but then I have some black dads come to my defense, you know, yeah. saying like, no, we need this. This is for us. Yeah. You shouldn't, you know. Uh, that's, this what about, that's what I'm about to say. I would have <laughs> been like that too. Like, okay, just don't listen. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But, yeah, yeah. But, yeah. It's, but, it, but, it, but to me though, it speaks to the whole, it speaks to the fact that race is such a trigger word in America. And that leads us to the notion that we really need to bring these things out and really talk about them. Like, why do you have such a visceral reaction to, you know, when somebody mentions race or when they talk about race or when they lead with, you know, something from a racial perspective, because leading with a racial perspective doesn't mean that it's only for them. That just means you're communicating it in a way that might directly correlate with or yeah. identify with the experience yeah. of a person who falls under that particular racial, you know, construct. Yeah. And I mean, I mean, I wouldn't be offended if I saw things said white fathers podcast, you know, mm -hmm. but I just wouldn't listen to it <laughs> because, mm -hmm. I, and I think that uh, for me, that that's what made me gravitate to your podcast was that I felt like the message was for a, uh, a, a absent group mm -hmm. of father discussions. Like I, I needed that, you know, I think me and I think a lot of your former guests or other people create spaces like this because uh, it, it's an absence, you know, like, mm -hmm. um, for instance, why is there a necessary need for a BSA or Black Student Alliance on mm -hmm. a campus? Doesn't mean it's exclusive of white people, but it just needs it. There, there means there's a space that's needed, um, mm -hmm. in predominantly white spaces. Mm -hmm. So I don't know where I was going with that. I just think that there's times where that messaging, as you said, it it's not when you say some black ex, you know, black insert this does not mean an absence or you cannot listen or be a part of it if you're white. It just means that we are creating a space 
for a group of people that probably not, not necessarily had that space. You, you know, I, I'll even that take it a step. You know what I'm saying? Like, I feel you, know, you. I, and, and I'll take it a step further because I, I truly believe it's just that we're just speaking the language of, right? Mm -hmm. Because, and I've used this example numerous times, it's, it's like music, right? So mm -hmm. if you think about like hip hop or rap music, you know, yeah. the overwhelming majority of the narratives, you know, center around like the urban experience or yeah. experience yeah. growing up in, you know, in urban America, so to speak, and which correlates typically with black and brown people, right? Right, right. But if you look at who buys rap music, 70% of all purchases are yeah. not black people. Right? right. But there's something about the music that they can connect with, even though they might not connect with the verbiage, the way they talk, the mannerisms, the rhythms and all that. They might not connect with that, but there's something about it they can learn from or that they like. Same thing with country music. Country music might use examples that directly correlate with a more of a rural laid back mm -hmm. lifestyle, right? But you got people from all walks of life that listen to country music, even yeah. though I might not connect with Old Yeller and the pickup truck and uh, yeah. this and the that, yeah. I still can connect with the storyline. And so, but yeah. those that are making those types of musics, music don't necessarily deviate from their theme yeah. to make it palatable to everybody else. They just make something that's awesome and those come to it or they don't. But yeah. those that you're speaking to, feel a kindred spirit so to saying. speak yeah because you're speaking their language it's like we yearn for that you know what yeah. i'm saying we yearn to have people to basically say something it's like oh man i, I would have said that too like yo yeah exactly that's what i'm saying we do i want to be respect i, I represent it one of the biggest notions of sense of belonging and i think mm -hmm. one of the things is when you look for like we talk about monolithic and we mm -hmm. talked about my episode of just belonging in certain spaces but i think like that's why i think your podcast is so important is because we just want to feel like we belong and certain aspects of our identity. And you said one of your top things when you came to the root of your, of your podcast is being a father. And so, and now that's similar to what I said, you know, when I, mm -hmm. that's one of the things that got me motivated. And so that when you know that's the core of who you are, black or core of who you are as black or core of who you are as a father, then you look for a, a, a community, mm -hmm. right? Whether yes. a digital community or a um, physical, you know, mm -hmm. that's why we join fraternities and we yes. join organizations. That's a physical community. But like in this day and age, we're so blessed to also have digital communities. And that's why we join Facebook groups. That's why mm -hmm. we do certain podcasts. And so that's why I gravitated. It was just natural. Like over mm -hmm. time, like you said, maybe it was like that uh, law of attraction. Like mm -hmm. over time, maybe it just naturally, I was looking for a voice about being a black father. I, I kept on saying, oh, this dude, Mike D or this, mm -hmm. Mike D or this. I'm going to check out a couple episodes. <laughs> and before you know it, I'm listening to it. So mm -hmm. I definitely think that I, I agree with you. Like you made the content for this group, no matter what, you're just going to make it. And then I think just by attraction, people are going to come to it. Dude, people, check this people out. People are going to come to the Father Podcast. I talk about positivity and well-being. Yes. I think eventually people just gravitate to it. I just, yes, I guess they, they, just wanted, they just wanted to listen to it. Dude. So concepts and principles transcend circumstances or genres right yeah. so if you come with legit concepts legit principles and you're telling really solid stories it doesn't really matter who it is folks yeah. tend to gravitate to that because those things transcend you yes. know what i'm saying yeah. just like being good to people that transcends no matter who you are or mm -hmm. being a good dad like you mentioned that transcends to i don't care what language you're speaking what country mm -hmm. you're from your socioeconomic yeah. class your race your orientation all that stuff it doesn't matter these concepts and principles transcend and that's what it's all about and they'll come to you and i, I think yes. that so for uh, you know let's say there's another black dad that wants to start a dad podcast mm -hmm. what were some things you would tell that guy you know go you know like start, start. <laughs> no i'm, I'm serious i'm yeah. serious let me tell you i'm gonna tell you what's interesting i actually had a brother on my um my show not too too long ago and we actually talked about this and he actually was going to create his own podcast right mm -hmm. and um and he was, you know, he was sending me e emails and wanting me to kind of check some stuff out for him. And in essence, what he was really trying to do was he was asking for permission if yeah. it would be OK. Like he didn't want to step on my toes to yes. start a podcast. Yes. And I told him, I was like, dude, in this space, a rising tide lifts all boats. Anything that I can do to help push you forward, let me know. Dude, I'm here because I want you to succeed because as you succeed, I succeed. Vice versa, as I succeed and blow, then all of us succeed and blow because it helps to raise the awareness. Because if somebody hears positive filter and they say, you know what, 
that's a pretty dope podcast, right? That's something that I can gain something from. Mm -hmm. And they see Philip and they see what he's got going on. They're like, man, maybe there's some other similar voices out there. Maybe not in the same space, but across the board. And they come across Mike D. It's like, uh, actually Phil was on Mike D's podcast. Let me go check that out. And I mean, it helps and it helps everybody to raise the, raise the awareness. But then the other part of it is this. There's only one Mike Dorsey. Well, I mean, there's yep. probably some other people named that. But yeah. there's only one Michael Leonard Dorsey who was born November the 15th, 1979 to Maggie and Keith Dorsey, right? Yes. There's, only, there's only one. So therefore, there's only one person that's going to have my voice. So yep. therefore, I connect with some. Some might not agree with me. That's okay. That's why we need others and options and out. It's like different, d- different uh, versions of the Bible. Some people can read the if it's with it's there it's whatever. Yeah. Some people need the yo. This is what the Bible say. <laughs> right? the, yeah, the, yeah, the new was it the, <laughs> the new I, international was, version, version and yeah, the yeah, contemporary. The NIV, yeah, yeah. yeah. You, yeah. I mean, it just depends. But we got different versions for a reason. And I think I, I also agree, like you said, it lifts the, the tides, lift all boats. Because you know, like I said, I went down the rabbit hole. When you have a really good guest, I'm like, let me check it out. And I listened to um. What's his name? Um, he was on the show, yeah, John Legends. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, that's 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 the one I was speaking about. Yeah, black. His his podcast is called Black Fathers Go Further. Yeah, black Malcolm. Goes, black, yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. Malcolm. And I was on. His, you know, like I said, oh wow. Then I clicked on the show notes. I, I started listening to his episodes. Mm-hmm. So it's like it's just everyone create a lane, and I I think that's what I love about this space too. Is like when you collaborate, I was like, there's no need to, <laughs> you know hoard space there's this i I love when you say i love it if you break down the numbers there's enough Mm -hmm. for everybody there's enough you write a book there's enough readers for everybody there's enough listeners for everyone there's enough music listeners for everyone there's enough for everyone don't be scared there's not we play the scarcity game dude and i think that's something especially with black folks we got to get out of right we've been told Mm -hmm. that we only got one shot we got just one shot and if we don't get it man we 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 we, that's it right it's kind of like when you watch like the american idols or whatever and how folks are like this is my only big shot to ever make it big no it's not right don't think that way because yes this might be a huge platform and it might be the largest platform that you've ever been on but that does not mean that this is your only shot towards success. No, no. And we have to rewire ourselves to think, of, you know, more in the, the whole concept of abundance. You know, we look at things from a scarcity perspective that right. there's only one. And if I don't get that one, or I got to knock somebody off to get it. Or I got to yes. knock somebody else's building down yes, for my yes. building to be tall. No, just build your freaking building, man. Like yeah. we have to start thinking about it from an abundance perspective. And it takes time to get there because we all come from different places and we all are hardwired with some different circumstances, which, do, which at times does limit our thinking, but we got to rethink that thing, man, and realize that there is so much abundance. There's, yeah. oh, come on, we got to go. And, and, and it's almost like that thing that like we can all shine together. I've always, yes. I've always wanted to, and I really work on this now too, because it's like, if I just do my, my own pursuit of excellence, if I'm a really good dad, mm-hmm. I'm a really good black father, mm-hmm. that doesn't take away from someone else being a black, good dad, black mm-hmm. father. Uh, you know, it's obviously it'll probably help elevate you know, if you stay mm-hmm. in your lane. And there's no need to hoard compliments and hoard, mm-hmm. hoard accolades and hoard anything. I think we can all shine together. That's always been my mindset. It's like, I, I, you know, when someone else is victorious, I celebrate their victories just like it's mine. Because, like, there's enough for everybody. I love that. I, I love, I'm going to have that. That's going to be one of my main things, too, for 2020 is mm-hmm. the, the perspective of abundance. There's Dude. enough for everybody. And, and th- think about this. What did Tupac say? Ain't no fun if the homies can't have none, right? Okay. <laughs> so, 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 yeah, so, yeah. so if you really stop and you think about it, man, like yeah. how fun would it be for you to be a billionaire sitting on the top of the mountain and can't nobody come and kick it with you? You know what I'm saying? No, like, how, how fun would it be for, you know, you flying private, you and your wife and your kids and y'all are doing this jet setting, but there's nobody for y'all to connect with because can't nobody else do it. So I'm my sure whole you. thing, yeah. and, it's, and it's not about necessarily saying that I want to be where everybody is, but I, man, I don't want to be by myself. I don't want to be on the top of a mountain. Mm-hmm. I'd much rather be like on a plateau where there's a lot of us living on that mountain. You know what I'm saying? Right. <laughs> like, we, can share, just, we, can, we can share. We can be, yes. We, just, we live a happy life together, not yes. alone. Like, yes. what, what good is climbing a ladder when you get to the top, you kick a bunch of people down, and you get to the top of that success, and you're by yourself? And what's that one junk? You'll see the same people on the way down as you saw yep, on the way saw up. On the way up. It's, I mean, that, that is so real, but it's just that my whole thing is like, what, what is, I, I don't, I'm not doing this to, to look good to anyone, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, my thing is, and it's a philosophy that I've adopted, man. It's, um, you know, everybody looks at themselves as a vessel, right? Yes. Meaning, you know, it's like, I want to get filled up and then my yes. cup runneth over once I fill up. 
Yes. I've kind of flipped that a little bit. My whole philosophy is to not be a vessel, but to be a tube or like a straw, right? So basically, oh, okay. it's a vessel with no bottom on it. Yes. So therefore, what comes in flows out the bottom, but I got to have enough faith and belief that that faucet's never going to get turned off. Right. It's challenging, and it challenges your faith on a daily basis, but I can't mm. wait until I'm full before I start spilling over, because if you're a vessel, you don't tip over unless somebody kicks you over or unless you're completely full. And so I'm not waiting until I'm completely full to share. It's like, I got to put it out there. Somebody gives me something, it's got to go. I got to put it out there because if it can help somebody, it's incumbent upon me to do so. I love it. And then so, so you got one guy that gave you some, you know, some, uh, the guy that asked permission and, and you say, mm -hmm. no, bro, you can, we can all do this. Mm -hmm. ha, has, ha, let's talk about the opposite side. Has someone ever said, yo, this is my lane, stay out my lane. You know, I'm trying to think, uh, you know, that does not happen from the standpoint of, you know, mm -hmm. folks tell you don't, but I do. And this is kind of like more of a covert way of doing it. You might not necessarily get the help that you want. Right. Okay. So, yes. Yes. so instead of somebody saying like, no, fam, you don't need to, man, this is my lane. You stay over there. You stay over there and yeah. do your thing. It's not that what may happen is maybe this person who has a connect with somebody who could really make some things happen and you and them are tight, maybe they don't open up their Rolodex to help you out. Oh yeah, no or, introductions. They kind of <laughs> then, kind of ghost you on emails or stuff. Yeah, like. maybe something like that. Or um, or even as, just as simple as, you know, maybe they don't share your episodes. Like you share theirs and, yeah. you know, recommend or whatever, but then you kind of pay attention. You're like, well, dang, dude, I mean, can you, you know, can I get a share as well? And yeah. you start to pay attention. I don't, I mean, I don't take it personally because I understand yeah. the wiring of some people. And I think some of that is selfishness on some. I think there are some that are trying mm -hmm. to hold on to theirs, but I do believe that there are some in which life happens and stuff just slips their mind. And I so got that too. Yeah, yeah. gentle yeah, reminders, yeah. it's like, oh, you know, and when you hit them, you're like, you know, you hit them up and say like, yo, dude, I thought you were going to share the episode or I thought you were going to hook me up with so-and-so. They're like, oh, dude, my bad, man. The kids got sick and yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah, here's, the, yeah. here's the info. Like, so I don't take it personally because sometimes it is a just... A simple slip of the mind, but yes, I yes. do know that there are folks who, you know, have covert scenarios and they adopt that whole, you know, the vessel mentality of they don't want to let theirs spill out until they're completely full. So I like that. Yeah. Yeah. That yes. makes sense. And that makes sense. And I think I'm, I'm going to work on that too. Cause I think that's happened where I don't want to take it personal, mm -hmm. you know? Um, but you know, like, cause obviously like sometimes the law what's it law of reciprocity mm -hmm. probably murdered that like you know you want to do yeah. one for one but you notice in life <clears throat> with people you do two to one like you're mm -hmm. you know because if you're a more giving person and then you start taking other people's efforts as an insult when you know that's just maybe your your uh either your vibration is higher that's how mm -hmm. you are or mm -hmm. just like your work ethic you know you're just a stop you're keeping running. score you yeah. got to stop keeping score. Oh, you can't, you can't help it. You know, I told you that too. I was like, yeah. Hey, mm -hmm. I said, like, who's going to be your most downloaded? Uh -huh. <laughs> so, yeah, you, but, 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 but I'm going to tell you though, man, that. that's that okay. like, um, I mean, that's cool from a competitive perspective, yes, but yes, yes. as it pertains to like, um, doing yeah. for one person and all of that, like yeah. in my first book, I had a chapter and it was saying it, the title of it was give continuously and anonymously. Right. Yes. Okay, and so yes. the whole, pre the whole premise on giving anonymously is when you give anonymously and folks don't know where it came from, yes. then you can't get tied into the, I'm getting honored for donating this and honored for that. It's like, no, they don't know where it came from, right? Yes. Or, and you make them sign confidentiality. Yo, you know, I'm doing this, but do not tell them where it came from. You know I'm what like, I'm saying? I'm going to try that. I'm going to try exercise like that too. Dude, that, might, I, that might be good for my well-being. Just I know personally I help someone. They don't yes. need to know where it comes from. I'm going to try and you that. Don't, and you don't tie it into the, the outcome because a lot of times we tie our giving or tie what we do into the outcome. And mm -hmm. therefore then our giving or whatever we do in a positive manner becomes conditional. Because what yes. happens when you don't get the response that you want? Like you yes. do, it's like, have you ever gone out of your way to help somebody and it's like they take it for granted? Yes. And then you're just like, I'll be damned, man. I, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to curse it. That's, that's all, yeah, whatever. Okay, no. yeah. yeah. <laughs> I was like, I'll be doggone, man. Yeah, I, I no, did no. all of this and you didn't even do nothing with it, you know? Yeah. But yeah. I'm tied into the outcome. Whereas if I just do it and release it, I can't control what they do with it, right? True sense of altruism. Yeah. Like you're doing it. Yeah, you're but doing we got to practice. 
But dude, we got to practice that. It's hard because that's not natural. No, <laughs> that's not, not at all. That's not natural. Not dude. At all. Like, not at it's all. like, dude, and look, I share your podcast. Like, bro, come on, man, share man, mine too. Man, when you donate to the church, dude, I'm putting my name on the envelope. <laughs> 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 now, 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 that's different because we can write out your tax. That's taxes. So that's, that's no, no. So that's a, that's slightly different. Like, no, my name's on the envelope. And, you know, we, we just signed up to get our, our statement for 2019 uh, last Sunday at church. So no, uh, no, I'm playing. That's a little different. That's I put taxes. tithes. God knows. Everybody knows. <laughs> yeah, God knows. Everybody knows. I want to know, too, because it's getting turned into Uncle Sam. And, uh, yes, I love that. I think that's a good exercise for the listeners to try. I'll try Maybe try doing something nice for someone else. With anonymous. No, Anonymously. Anonymously. Like, yeah. I'm t- even simple things like, you know, when you're, I mean, people have done this before, like you're at Starbucks or yeah, whatever your it. favorite. Yeah, you buy the person behind you stuff. Now, you might get caught up because they got an order for the office and you're like, dang, I got a $50 Starbucks offer. But at the yes. end of the day, <laughs> you know, yes. it is what yes. it is. But yeah. that's a simple way of doing something. And then or you just like, drive off. Or a coworker, like, slide something under their door, don't tell them who it's from. That's right. Or if you know something's going on with a neighbor and you know, like the kids got something, go- whatever, drop something on the, per- on the porch and just go, don't let them know where it came from. It's not no. about you leave. Just drop it off. That and might see what be happens. Nice. That might be a nice exercise. Mm-hmm. I'm going to try that. I'm going to try that. In a, let me know in, how it goes. Man. I'm going to try it in a budget way though. You know, I, yeah, oh, <laughs> what's what I'm ta- that's what I'm saying. So that's why I said Starbucks can be challenging. You better go to like maybe McDonald's, but make sure you get in front of a uh, car. Make some, not bake, a lot bake, of- some, bake some cookies and leave them and run away. Yeah, yeah, there you go. Make <laughs> some cookies and leave them somewhere. Like door knock and run. <laughs> <laughs> You'll see your neighbors running. Like, why is this dude running away from my house? <laughs> like, I know, right? <laughs> who knows? Well, no, with, with, the new, with the new ring cameras and stuff, I don't think uh, you, you probably get caught. That. Yeah, you, you get, get caught with that. So yeah, that, that's not the way to do it no more. No, it's not. <laughs> 2020. So we're at a good part. Uh, I like to do what I call part of my show. I call it shot for shot. Meaning you okay. get to ask me any random question. I ask you any random question, mm-hmm. not related to podcasts, anything you want to know mm-hmm. and you just ask. You want to go first? I'll go first. Oh, wow. Interesting. Interesting. Okay. So what did you eat for breakfast this morning? Nothing. I drink coffee. I'm going to try to do this thing called intermittent fasting. Yeah, yeah I do. So I I'm going to do, well. I'm trying, uh, what's it? 16 and eight. Okay. So I'm not eating till I'm not eating till one. So you're gonna eat between one and nine? Yep. Okay. Cool. Yeah, so I was like, I'm really working on I need to lose a few LBs. Mm-hmm. Uh, a few I need to use a lot. <laughs> mm-hmm. no, mm-hmm. I, I don't know. I used to be so into lifting weights and stuff and life got me. So I know the first part I can control, whether it's my time in the gym or not, is my my like that, my diet, but that mind part. And mm-hmm. so this is, this is going to be my jump start is the intermediate fasting to mm-hmm. incorporate. Then I'm going to incorporate the fitness too. Okay. Solid, solid, solid. I like Amen. black coffee too. That's what I've been drinking right now is mm-hmm. pure black coffee and water. I got water. And then See, when I'm ready to eat. Mm-hmm. Wifey eat. bought me an espresso machine for my birthday. And so I do, exp- I do a little double shot of espresso in the morning. Just straight black espresso. Yes. Do you yeah. uh do you ever do that? Have you ever tried that bulletproof coffee with the Yeah, I used butter? to do that some. Yeah, with the like the grass fed butter and all yeah. I used to do that some, but well, I don't really do that. Like literally before I did the the espresso thing, we would I would just do black coffee with coconut cream. Yes. So okay. I do a coconut cream and I actually add some spices to it. So I do like, you know, add some um like cardamom or I add like okay. some uh yeah some different different spice whatever I got in the to give it a little the, bit of flavor okay I'm yeah. gonna try that because I, I yeah. like coffee so I can drink it by itself mm-hmm. yeah I do too all right so you do all you know definitely you, you're a member of Omega Sci-Fi I might have mm-hmm. to hit you with that John mm-hmm. uh when, take us back why of all organizations did you pick that one did you have a family connection to it um I don't know just take us back to that one for you <laughs> and you know i got no shade we like we you know we 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 boys because you know uh-huh. I, I i said my dad is one of the bras uh-huh. we, all, we all make choices in life uh, <laughs> i love but, it man uh, but, I, I, but i wanted to know your i always find it fascinating because let me first do a caveat i got love for everyone in every greek letter organization because as we know it's supposed to be the uplift of all black people mm-hmm. so i joke with people we do all these going back and forth but at the end mm-hmm. of the day we got res- i got respect and love for everybody because at the end of the day i don't care what you are as long as you get a college degree and you're going to come back and get back to the community because mm-hmm. i even got i got i ain't gonna lie in no shape i got brothers in my chapter i'm not chapter oh i love all my brothers in my chapter mm-hmm. i got i got people it don't matter <laughs> what letters you wear you know you're not doing stuff and then there's the opposite where there's people wearing letters of all different organizations that are doing stuff so it's about the person more mm-hmm. than the, the overall organization. Absolutely, absolutely. That's my two cents. One hundred. And I'm everyone's favorite alpha. 
<laughs> well, I am a wholesome brother of Omega Sci Fi Fraternity Incorporated. But um, but yeah, so so to that point, man, I um, you know, I, I can say I chose it, but the reality is it kind of chose me, right? Yes. My, uh -huh. you know, my grandfather, you know, 1957 from wow. Psi Omega. Then my dad was 1974 from wow. Upsilon Sigma. Wow. And then I have, you know, an uncle that's, yes. you know, 1988 from the zoo. And I got a, my, one of my, bro actually both of my younger brothers plays before me. So I, one of my brothers was 2004 for TD Squared. Another one was 2003 from Zai Psi. And then I'm 2005. Mm from my older alpha i mean wow. when you look at it wow from a, that's a family affair from wow. a family perspective i think we have about four i mean including cousins and uncles and all of that we have about 14 or 15 family Whoa. members that are Whoa. members of omega Psi Phi fraternity incorporated wow. so it wow. was funny growing up you know like my godfather you know is 75 you know yes. upsilon six i mean so i grew up in a scenario yes. with all our cookouts and family functions yes it's about all the adult males that ended up going to college that yes. plays a fraternity were men of Omega Psi Phi fraternity there incorporated. Yes. So it was one of those things where I always aspired to that. And it was funny, you know, I went to college and I mean, I thought I wanted to be a doctor and engineer mm -hmm. and all of that stuff. And that was kind of on the fence, but I knew I wanted to be a member of Omega Psi Phi fraternity incorporated. And, um, it, but that's probably it. the reason why I wasn't able to pledge until grad chapter because I <laughs> didn't do what I needed to do academically <laughs> because, I got you. My, I got you know, you. that's, I mean, that was the sole thing that I wanted to do. I knew, I knew I wanted to be a Q. That was, that was set in stone. The other stuff I could figure it out, but I knew I wanted to be a Q, but got it. you know, got and it. it's funny. So yeah. So, so to that oh, point, man, yeah. that's, that's a bunch yeah. of purple at the cookout. <laughs> What you talking about? Pur royal purple and old gold, my brother. Dang, that whole cookout, the whole cookout's turned out. Yeah, I, I, you know my story. I'm all we all over the box. I don't mm -hmm. know. I don't think we have. <laughs> we got a bunch <laughs> of people all over the place. You, you never know. So random cousin might be a sigma somewhere. I don't know. <laughs> now, 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 let me tell you what's funny. I do have one cousin. Shout out to my cousin what? <laughs> Valentino Charles Dorsey. I give a shout out. He he's a sigma. I don't know what happened. But we you got, got one. one. You got, you got one. one. Everybody else, we the cues. Yeah. I love it. I love it. And, I, I, and that's like I said, that's a bonding thing. It's a community oh, yeah. thing. Oh, uh, yeah. You know, and I, I, at the end of the day, I think I, I just, I appreciate all the, all organizations that as a mindset that that was what they're supposed to be doing. Like, mm -hmm. you know, beyond just, you know, the, the I, I'm the idealist and the idealist in me says, you know, no matter what, if we're trying to help each other mm -hmm. and, 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 get through college and get a college degree and have a space for black men, um, you know, a black, you know, a community space. Mm -hmm. It don't matter what it is, as long as all those brothers at any organization graduate, that's the main point mm -hmm. to me, you mm -hmm. know, get, get your, get your grades and get through school. And, and then as you graduate, you come back and you help the students or, you know, your neos come back to school <laughs> as an old head and help them out too. So Absolutely. I think it don't matter what it is, as long as you had that, 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 that responsibility to help. Um, so I love it. Yeah, Absolutely. man. Jeez, my dad would fit in with. Uh, it's funny, dude, because all my dad's quote unquote uncles, uh -huh. uncles growing up, I had so many uncles. It was like Uncle Joe, uh -huh. Uncle Uncle Kip, Uncle uh -huh. all these uncles. They're all cues. Uh huh. <laughs> I'm sure they're like, damn, what happened to my nephew? <laughs> uh -huh. What What happened to Nep, man? Come on. Yeah, yeah. What happened to my nephew? I don't know. Who knows? So, up. I'm so glad, you know, I'm so glad you've been on the show. And obviously, you know, you could be on the show anytime. Mm -hmm. uh, and I definitely, I bothered you like you bothered me. I was going to mm -hmm. say, there's no way possible I'm not going to be on your show. And there's no That's way right. possible that you are not going to be on my show. I said this earlier, you were, when I started going down the podcast for me to listen to, yours was one of the ones for Black Fathers that is in my queue. I need to, I listen to it to help me. It's in your queue. Involved. Yeah. Thank you. Oh. Uh, <laughs> oh, you're so smart. I'm so smart. You're so smart. Yes. But it's definitely a resource. For, it's always been a resource for me. It's something to listen to, uh, you know, just randomly in my headphones. I got it listening and listening mm -hmm. to it. And so I knew I was like, someday, kind of the law of attraction, speaking into mm -hmm. existence. I was like, we're gonna connect. Either I'm gonna be are. on his show or be on mm -hmm. mine. I was gonna respond to him in the group meetings. And, 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 for, so, and, and beyond that, man, we've also built a working relationship going forward that we're going to, I don't know what, but something or something will get built here. And so oh, of course. that's, that's a, that's a really awesome thing. And so fellas, ladies, anybody listening, man, don't shy away from building meaningful relationships in your life. Right. Yes, yes. Even, I mean, random scenarios can turn into meaningful relationships, but really put, place a premium 
or meaningful relationships because they can lead to special stuff. And I would say one of the things too I've learned uh, in the podcast world particularly is that one of the main drivers of elevating your own podcast is collaboration. Yes. Uh, my podcast has been taken to the next level. Not, not saying because I've been, uh, what's it called? Like um, climbing a ladder with a purpose, but I've learned so much. Mm-hmm. I started using Zoom because of you, mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> honestly. Um, it, it's because I've learned things collaborating with other podcasters. I learned mm-hmm. new techniques. I learned new ways to go about it. I learned, oh, did you do this? We, oh, you're a weekly show? So if you're a new podcaster, do not be afraid to collaborate with other mm. podcasters. Uh, there's a whole community of it. And I think, that's, I think that's one of the things I love about the podcast world. It is supposed to be built on collaboration and not isolation. Ooh, so, dude, nothing great was ever built on an island or in isolation. You can be awesome, but you can also be the most awesome thing nobody's ever heard of. Collaborate. Unless you live on Fantasy Island, and then that's a pretty big mansion. Oh, yeah, that's cool. That's cool. But even then, ain't no fun <laughs> if the homies can't have none. You and by he, yourself, player. And, and he had guests come all the time. So, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so he's technically not by himself. Not by we can himself. go and create, like, with, uh, Br- uh, Richard Branson's Necker Island and just bring in folks. And <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, so, okay. Gotcha. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> we could go on tangents about just shows all the time. All right, <laughs> so, the floor is yours, um, Mr. Mike D., Floor is yours. Shout out to whoever you want to shout out and plugs. Make sure when we do the plugs, you'll put it to give it to me in the email. It'll mm-hmm. be in the sh- it'll be in the show notes. Um, okay. For, for everyone to follow it with you, because that's definitely what I want them to do. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Well, first, man, I want to say shout out to you, man, for what you're doing. Um, please continue doing so, man. Everybody needs a little bit of positive filter in their life. So yes. continue doing what you're doing. Keep keep striving, keep pushing, man. Keep re reinventing yourself and growing, brother, because we all need it. The world needs the best version of you. So thank you. Um, as far as shout outs are concerned, man, first and foremost, you know, got to give a shout out to God, man, because without God, I ain't, mm, I ain't nobody yeah. and I ain't here. So first yeah. shout out there. Um, but then, you know, my wife, Maisha, my kids, Morgan and mm-hmm. Maxwell, you know, my parents, my brothers, uncles, aunts, cousins, niece, nephew, soon to be nephew, godparents, uh, cousins, friends, families, I mean, frat brothers, neighbors, everybody, anybody who's had a hand in my life, I want to say thank you. I try to mm-hmm. take an opportunity to say thank you every mm-hmm. chance I get. And so thank you. Um, for those that have not subscribed already, please check out Black Fathers Now anywhere mm-hmm. you listen to podcasts, iTunes, our Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Google Play, YouTube, anywhere right? Just search Black Fathers Now, hit that subscribe button, hear a few episodes, and then leave some comments, man. I really appreciate you. If you visit blackfathersnow.com, from there, you can click a little link called apparel. And we really have some dope apparel that helps to really kind of reshape the narrative of the black community. Mm-hmm. A lot of stuff kind of centered around, you know, Black Fathers Matter, as well as some images that help to reshape the narrative of the black experience. Check apparel, grab a little something, man. That's really awesome. As well as my book, Dynamic Black yeah, Fatherhood right. Manifesto yeah. from blackfathersnow.com. You can click the link on the book and you can grab a, um, a copy of Dynamic Black Fatherhood Manifesto. It's available, you know, paperback as well as on Kindle. And, um, and you your know, other, again, is, your other, is your other book on uh, the same website as well? Yeah, yeah. Well, it's on, it's on Amazon. So when you go to yes. Amazon, if you click Abe, always be engaged, the seven keys to living a yes. fit urban life, or you just follow me on Amazon, you can literally, you can get the book. So both get of the both titles, books. yeah, yeah, are under there. So definitely grab a copy of the book, grab some apparel. If you're interested in having me come out and speak, you know, definitely visit IamMikeDorsey.com. I'd love to come speak at your university, your, you know, your group, your association meeting, whatever, man. I'd love to come out and chop it up with you. So again. Thanks for the platform, my man. And I guess until next time, you know, we'll definitely connect. Yeah. So thank you so much. Uh, Listeners, it's been a great episode. Please follow uh, Mike D on all his social medias and all the things that he was going to put in the show. I'm going to put in the show notes. If you have any questions for the podcast, just follow Positive Filter on everything, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. And then if you want to leave a voicemail for the podcast, either visit the website and you can leave a voicemail directly on the website, positivefilter.com, or you can call the number 571 336-6560. Three three six six five six zero. That's five seven one three three six six five six zero. Thank you so much for listening, and we're out. Thank you for listening to Positive Filter, a podcast that focuses on family, friends, career, with a little self help along the way. If you enjoyed this podcast, please share it with your family and friends, and like the Facebook page, spreading positivity of movement. Thanks for listening.